today's topic is about GearDops. Um, so the automatic deployments and updates with Flux. First of all, uh, let me quickly introduce myself, Julian Hennig, Senior Solutions Architect. Uh, I'm working on different Kubernetes projects in different um, sectors like the automotive, pharma, fintech, or e-commerce, um, and helped already develop innovative container-based solutions um, uh, with different customers uh, back then as a consultant, and since uh, around about three years as a solution engineer or senior solution architect now at Mirantis. Um, again, about the agenda, what we'll look into, uh, we will look into what GitOps is, um, so what problems can I solve with GitOps, uh, what benefits uh, do I get uh, with GitOps and what use cases can I handle with GitOps, also how GitOps uh, in particular works, so how pipelines will look like, and um, the uh, two different approaches for pull-based and push-based deployments. And we will look into um, um, an example with K0S and Flux, as uh, it is uh, written in the description and the title as well. Look into a demo, and at the end, we'll have some time for the Q and A session. All right, let's start again with the uh, um, quote from Kelsey Hightower. You probably all know uh, Kelsey, um, and uh, from my point of view, this uh, quote definitely describes GitOps very well. It's a version CI/CD on top of decorative infrastructure, stop scripting, and start shipping. So, what is GitOps? Um, it is a concept that was introduced, initiated back then in 2017 by WeaveWorks, um, the creators of Flux as well. And um, it uses the um, Git repository as single source of truth with all its benefits um, of, of course, a version control system um, and all the functionalities um, that comes with it. And um, continuous deployment is um, key here. Another quote um, from GitLab this time, uh, GitOps equal infrastructure as code plus merge request plus CI CD. Um, so it combines uh, the uh, um, approach of infrastructure as code. Of course, you can use GitOps not only with application deployments or infrastructure from a point of view of Kubernetes. You can also use GitOps, for example, for Terraform or other infrastructure as code mechanisms. It combines it with merge requests, so the functionality that sits inside um, Git. And of course, CI/CD um, is crucial because those deployments or those um, different infrastructure parts need to be deployed and, of course, checked as well um, for security vulnerabilities or linting, so quality of code or um, code uh, melts or anything else. So, in total, it's a combination of established processes and automation and focuses on developer more than um, the operator, um, of course, because from our point of view, um, developer experience is key uh, for the future and developers are uh, really uh, most important from our point of view for the future. So what problems do I solve with GitOps? Um, a big one is, of course, misconfiguration. Um, if you have like a DevOps pipeline, for example, kind of generally like CI CD pipelines and a DevOps approach, um, you have two different parties that are working normally on um, Kubernetes deployments. The one is the application developer uh, creating code, and the second one is the operator looking into the infrastructure and, of course, into your YAML files and to manifest as well. Sometimes um, in some companies, uh, developers are forced 
to work on uh, manifest files as well. So there's a big um, gap, um, of course, of knowledge as well. If you uh, want to uh, make your developer create uh, Kubernetes manifest file. Um, so misconfiguration can be solved with GitOps because you can do linting as well uh, to do checks of the uh, YAML file, of the Kubernetes YAML file. We have the standardization. Of course, GitOps helps with that. You can check your YAML files. You can um, make your developers or operators um, uh, keep a common style of the uh, YAML files, um, look into, um, as mentioned, check um, of those files and therefore create a standardization in um, your infrastructure as code or uh, your GitOps pipelines. Um, collaboration, I've already mentioned, developers and um, operators sometimes work uh, in peril, um, but not together. In this case, with the GitOps approach, you have like the single source of truth with this, uh, which is the uh, GitOps repository. So everyone will work with merge requests, will work with, uh, uh, for example, feature branches. And um, you have much more single point of truth than before. Security, I've mentioned checks. So of course you can uh, have checks for uh, security vulnerabilities or misconfigurations again. Automation is key. You want to um, keep everything automated in your CI CD pipelines with GitOps. Um, we'll have a look into pull-based and push-based, what is automated and uh, where, for example, a push-based approach is not uh, very well-fitting instead of a pool-based approach. Documentation, normally you need to uh, do documentation separately. In this uh, case with GitOps, for example, you have everything in one GitOps repository or one uh, Git repository. And uh, even open source tools that can help with uh, doing documentation. Um, which are reading YAML files and create readme files for those different deployments. And with the uh, reaction times, of course, um, that's a, a very important uh, uh, thing too, because with um, GitOps, you can create preview environments. We'll have a look into that too. Um, so those preview environments can be uh, created just in after pushing your code. So you can have a look into on um, how, for example, your next version of uh, in your feature brand will look like. And I've already mentioned a lot of benefits here um, now. Uh, so of course, with that, you can deploy faster and more often. Um, you have those preview environments for uh, example, uh, feature uh, branches. So if you want to check if a feature um, is looking good in your environment or looking good in your application um, with GitOps, that is possible because uh, for each feature branch, you can create um, your own deployment or environment. Um, we'll look into that too in the demo. Um, it improves efficiency, um, definitely uh, security as well. We talked about the single source of truth. So everyone is working in one Git repository, which leads to fewer errors and faster problem resolution. And of course, the self-documenting deployments. I've mentioned that already. But how does GitOps really work? Um, as mentioned, uh, the code um, and the Git are the single source of truth um, in GitOps. And there are two or three uh, in total, two different approaches. Um, one is the uh, uh, application repository and the environment repository uh, to keep those separate. So you have your application code and the application repository and the uh, environment repository 
uh, just for your Kubernetes YAML files, for example, and customized files. So you can have those two separate. The second option is to have both combined and run one repository, which of course can lead to confusion if an operator wants to do some changes on YAML files. He needs to always create merge requests for uh, application repository where your code um, is located in uh, that can lead to problems. In GitOps, you have also an engine, which is, of course, uh, tooling, um, which can be um, seen in two approaches or what can, which can have two approaches. One is the um, um, the push-based uh, approach and one is the pull-based approach. So every time there are changes to your infrastructure um, in the environment repository, for example, uh, with a push-based approach, there's a trigger. So, for example, a commit, um, and the changes will be applied to your target environment via pipeline. The pull-based approach um, is uh, based on an operator that will constantly compare uh, the two environments, so the desired state and the actual state. And this operator can also monitor your uh, image uh, repository, so your container image repository, which can help as well. Um, we'll have a look into that. So I've already mentioned push-based and pull-based. Um, examples for the um, uh, push-based deployment are uh, CI ops tooling, like for example, Jenkins, like Circus CI or Travis CI. Um, I've mentioned that it's always being triggered by an event, like a commit, for example, a merged feature request, um, or a uh, merge request generally, um, or a completed CI pipeline. So for example, you create your image first, and then this image, um, or the new image in the repository on the registry, will trigger another pipeline to deploy the changes to your target environment. This is mostly um, done separately, so CI and CD, and um, push-based is mostly uh, not directly part of GitOps, can be part of GitOps, but uh, we'll have a look into that too. The pull-based approach, um, there are tools like, for example, Flux, we'll have a look into that. Um, Lagoon, uh, uh, open source product from our partner Amazi.io, um, or for example, Argo CD, um, where you can do your continuous deployment as well um, and do GitOps as well. Um, Lagoon, for example, is much more than just a GitOps tool. Um, it can help um, to do, well, it is a uh, application delivery platform, uh, but uh, yeah, not not topic of today. Uh, with a pull-based approach, we have an operator, as mentioned, that is constantly um, or continuously comparing the desired state and the actual state of the environment um, and the deployment, for example, um, and will update uh, if there are changes. Optionally, uh, you can have a, a monitoring of the image registry, um, which can trigger another update of the environment. Um, of course, that is uh, needs to be co configured, for example, if, if it is required or if, it is, um, if you want to do that. Um, the big benefit, um, that's why we have preferred here, um, is um, that uh, you have with the pull base approach, um, the operator con continuously comparing um, every manual change that will be made to the environment. For example, someone is changing the port, is adding uh, resources, or is um, just changing anything um, in the components and in the infrastructure you've deployed. Uh, via GitOps, 
it will be overwritten by the desired state. So you can set the interval uh, for uh, the checks uh, where the desired state and the actual state will be compared. If we look into um, how it is being done, so on the uh, left side, we have the pull, uh, push-based approach, um, the application repository. Uh, there's a new commit, for example, a new uh, merge request, which will trigger the build pipeline. This can be a build pipeline within GitLab, for example, GitHub, it can be uh, Jenkins or any other CI tool, Travis CI or any other CI tooling which then uh, will push the image to the re image registry and um, update the environment repository. Because of the um, update in the environment repository, there's another trigger, which will trigger the deployment pipeline. And the deployment pipeline will then update the deployment in the environment. On the right side, we have the pull-based um, approach. Um, so we have the application repository. There's an, uh, again a trigger um, that is creating the uh, image. Um, so with the build pipeline, that's again a job uh, that can be done either within Kubernetes or externally, uh, as mentioned with the different toolings. Um, this new container image will be pushed to the image registry. And um, there will be an update to the environment repository as well. Now, the approach is a bit different here. Um, we have the operator observing both the environment repository and the image registry. And if there are changes, for example, to the image registry, the operator will write those changes to the environment repository, optionally, as mentioned, and then um, do an update of the deployment if the um, target state or the desired state is different to the action state. And that already leads us to the demo. As mentioned, I will do a demo today of GitOps with Flux and K0S. What we will see in a minute <clears throat> is a K0S cluster. And we as a developer or operator will push um, a change or will push, first of all, um, our um, uh, YAML files to the uh, newly created Git repository. Uh, we will do uh, an installation of Flux. There are different components of Flux running in K0S, like the source controller, like the customized controller or the Helm controller, and those changes will be then, or the creation of those YAML files will then be applied within our K0S cluster. And we'll have a look into on the K0S cluster directly via lens because it saves time and definitely helps to visualize um, the changes uh, and the CRDs, for example, of Flux as well. So, Let's start and dig into a second, dig into uh, the demo. So first of all, um, if I want to use Flux, so we'll have a look into uh, the uh, full based approach um, today with Flux. Um, first of all, of course, I need to have some kind of personal access token. So Flux is able to access my Git repository. I will use GitHub and we'll create a new environment, a new repository, uh, which is called Hello World Environment. This is public um, and uh, therefore we don't really need to have um, we don't really need to have a private uh, uh, key um, to write into uh, this repository. But um, I've created this one so the uh, uh, Flux system is able to write into the public repository. All right. Um, so first of all, um, we will look into uh, Lensium. Um, you need to have Flux installed. Um, for um, uh, example, for Mac, it's just the uh, installation 
via brew. I've done that already. So we have Flux ready to go here. Have a look. And currently in this cluster, there's no Flux system installed. We can have a look into the namespaces here. Um, so looks completely uh, free. Uh, this cluster, K0S cluster, is just a standalone cluster, one node cluster with all components installed. Uh, we can have a look into the applications. There are only 17 uh, pods running in here and uh, nothing, nothing fancy. But let's now uh, install Flux. First of all, I need to um, specify my GitHub user because of course um, Flux needs to know uh, which environment or which uh, Git repository it will or needs to use. This can be, of course, an organization, for example, team as well. Um, so in this case, I'm just using my uh, GitHub user. And the GitHub token we, we've just created here. So we just copy this one, paste it, and give it a go. One small tip for everyone that is uh, working with um, the terminal a lot. If you don't want to have um, a command um, being saved in your history, you can just add a space here and it won't be in your history. I should have done that, but I missed that for the first command. Um, so now let's install uh, Flux to our cluster. So it's Flux Bootstrap and we use GitHub for, in this case, of course, can be a different um, uh, Git repository as well or Git, um, Git provider. We use our GitHub user. Um, I will specify the uh, uh, environment repository as well. So this one is wrong. So it's hello world. Um, we'll save everything directly in the uh, root path of the uh, repository and it's a personal repository. So let's do that. <clears throat> and we will see um, in the meantime, installing components, uh, flux, we can see there are some new parts uh, that are starting. We have the new namespace in here as well should be flux system, um, very good. And we can see there are new pods in flux system that are currently starting. Now, as mentioned, uh, we have the source controller, we have the notification controller that was not on the image I showed you before, um, which would just, or can notify us, um, can notify even um, like a Slack channel or Teams channel. We have customized controller and the Helm controller. So all components are there. And Flux says all components are healthy. Very good. So now that we have all the components, um, we also have different custom resources in here. So custom resource definitions just um, uh, extending the Kubernetes API and this one is the source toolkit Flux CDIO. And we can see we have notifications here as well, alerts, providers, receivers. And we have the source with the bucket of Git repository. We have Helm charts, Helm repositories here as well, or OCI repositories. So we can even use Helm charts with Flux as well, or Git repositories. And we have one in here, but so let's have a look. This Git repository just shows us what we've just configured. Um, so it will look into our uh, GitHub. It just created the SSH key uh, for GitHub here as well for the Hello World env. And it is ready and was already checking if there are any changes, but looks good to Flux. If we now look into our GitHub, um, we can do an update here. 
And we can see that Flux already committed changes um, just because of the Flux system <clears throat> that was created, sorry. <clears throat> Um, so now that we have, where we have like uh, everything ready, we can start with the um, <clears throat> deployment of our demo application. So for the demo application, um, I have a very simple Hello World container um, uh, where we, are, which we will use for deployment. Um, we'll create the namespace automatically first of all, uh, the deployment and the service, and then look into that as well. So to do that, I want to create those repository, uh, uh, those files in our repository. Um, so I will use uh, GitHub desktop for that to keep it uh, simple. Looks good. All right. And we will open this in Visual Studio. So we can see um, our flux system is in here as well. I will just copy the path uh, because we can use this terminal <clears throat> for the installation um, of our um, application here as well. So we'll have a look into pods or first of all, like have a look into our namespaces because we will see that the namespace will be created within um, this cluster as well. So I will just use our Hello World environment now. And what I will do now <clears throat> is I will create one, um, one folder with manifests. And now use uh, Flux to create the first customization file. And we'll directly save where Flux can uh, crawl the manifests from. So of course, I've now configured the connection to uh, the environment repository, but I want to say that all manifests um, need to be in the manifests or manifest path. I will also say that um, there needs to be a, a target namespace uh, for that. I also want to say that uh, if there's anything running um, or in this repository, prune it, delete it, and um, look for new changes every five minutes. Now with that, we have a new file in here, manifests and the static customization, which describes completely what uh, will be done. Um, so the pipeline, um, it will look into manifest, will deploy everything in manifest, we'll look into that every five minutes. Uh, we'll look uh, or use the uh, Git repository, the Flux system that we've just created with the target namespace Narrative Labs. And that's a customization already. So in here, um, I will create uh, the namespace. So let's do that. So I've created the YAML file, which is very simple uh, namespace YAML file. And also I will create a customization, um, which just says uh, use namespace.yaml um, and do or deploy that to the cluster. Now, if we look into our reposit or the repository again, and into the file, we can see the namespace YAML file and we can see uh, the customization with namespace. That should be good. Now we need to uh, commit those changes and I will say namespace, create a commit directly to main. Of course, what we can also do is commit to a feature branch 
And uh, with, for example, Flux CD, we could configure um, this as well. So every time something gets pushed to your a feature branch, there will be a new namespace for this feature branch. So we can use the name of the feature branch and it will create a new environment. There are tools like Lagoon that will create this automatically for you um, with Flux and what we are uh, doing here right now uh, it needs to be configured uh, by us. So I've just committed this change now to GitHub um, and now we can have a look into our custom resources here as well. And we have the Git repository and our Flux system. And it says no changes since last con reconciliation, uh, but just a minute ago or two minutes ago. Um, sometimes, you do not even need to wait for the five minutes. Um, so sometimes this is much faster as we can see. Two seconds, four seconds, we have now the Mirantis Labs namespace, which is being created by Flux system uh, with the meta, uh, metadata name Mirantis Labs. Very good. So we have a namespace now. Uh, where we can deploy our changes uh, into our deployment into. Um, for that, I will just uh, create those two new files. So the deployment file and the service file. And uh, add some information, of course, in these files. So now we are again in, in our uh, repository. I will just add more information to um, the deployment file because we just created skeletons. And we will do the same for the uh, service YAML. And What's very important is, oh, one second. What's very important is that we add this to the customization file as well, because now uh, currently the customization file just has the has the namespace YAML and the service YAML. So what I will do is just add the deployment YAML and service YAML, save that so we have the deployment. Simple application, we don't, uh, we can of course add resources here, but I will just uh, leave it open. Um, container port 8080 application will be uh, deployed to a namespace around this labs. And the service is empty, that should not be the case. And we have the service. Service um, will be deployed to Mirantis Labs called Just Hello World and will be exposed to port 80 and the target port 8080. Selector app is Hello World. We have everything that we need. So let's get back to your um, GitHub. Of course, you can do all of that with uh, GitHub, uh, Git, Git commands or just uh, use the GitHub client here, adding deployment and service. Push that to the repository. We can have a look into the repository again. We can see we have manifest in here. We have our namespace and service and deployment. If we now look into um, our Kubernetes cluster again, our K0S cluster, no pods so far. 
we can have a look again into um, the Git repository, the different namespace. We are seeing, oh, there was a commit. So um, uh, the operator just looked into uh, the repository. And now we should have a part, at least one part, there around this labs. And that is the case. So the deployment was deployed directly to um, our K0S cluster. We should also have the service in here, the had a word service. And to keep it simple, I will just use a uh, lens now. Of course, I could have created an ingress uh, rule for that, uh, but I will just use lens. And we can see something's wrong. That's not good. Um, why is there something wrong? So um, if we look into uh, the pod again, we can see the pod is looking good. It's running. Pod 8080. All right. Let's look into uh, the pod logs. And oh, we've exposed it on pod 80. Of course, this small um, problem or this small misconfiguration um, was very obviously. And of course, um, this could be um, a bug or any problem you have with the application or configuration. So to uh, reconfigure or to change this, we can just go into our deployment. The container port 80, we want to change the service. So it will be port 80 too. Now with those two changes, we can go back to um, our Git repository. Port update. Commit this, push it to our Git repository. And with the push, um, we will see uh, in some seconds um, that there will be a new version. But um, you might have the question, what is happening here? Uh, we'll have a look into that. So what we've just created now is um, this pipeline. Um, so FluxCD starts to watch to, um, into the Git branch that we've just created. We've created the repository, and then we push code to this repository. The FluxCD itself detected the change um, or detected the event, compares the uh, to uh, the branch uh, or the Git repository with the actual um, installation or with the actual uh, deployment, deploys the changes and just sends back an acknowledge as we can see in our Git repository in Flux or so, uh, in Lens. We can see that everything got created. We saw the error, um, we adjusted the YAML, committed the code. Um, again, Flux detected the event or detected that there's a change. Is deploying currently in the background the change and sends back to us the acknowledge. If we again now look into our pod, we can see it's exposed um, now on pod 80. That's good. So let's look into uh, again our service part 80. So we can just open that and we can see um, it just shows us simple world hello world container, container name, it shows us the container IP address and running since uh, some minutes, different time zone, but um, it shows that everything is running as expected. So with that, um, you just saw a very short, brief demo of how Flux can help you. And as a summary, 
the GitOps approach can help uh, to automate the deployment and sets the uh, uh, focus de definitely on the developer because the developer is used to Git, is used to work with Git and a version control system. We have all the benefits um, of the version control system of um, the Git you want to use, of course, GitHub, GitLab, um, or uh, anything you want to use. And because of that, it provides consistency. Um, we have reliability, we have scalability, of course, and it can enable a faster time to market in the easier rollbacks. Because if we see a change or merge request, we can roll back to the late last version that was running, um, the last commit. And that's where uh, we definitely recommend to have two different repositories, the application and the environment repository, because otherwise you would need to roll back the application repository as well, which makes makes in sometimes uh, some cases no sense. And this all not only works uh, with like single repositories, of course, you can have like multiple repositories within one Kubernetes cluster, or you can use different Kubernetes clusters uh, with the same repository. So there's a end to end. So uh in each way you can use uh no um any any kubernetes distribution as well um with this we just saw you no know, k0s um a small k0s cluster you need to think about the pros and cons of pull and push based definitely and the tooling Flux can help uh, very easily. Um, it is an open source tool you can directly install into your Mirantis Kubernetes engine cluster, into your uh, K0S cluster, or any other Kubernetes distribution. Um, it is, again, very uh, uh, terminal um, focused uh, for people that like to work with terminals. That's, that's very good. Uh, what can help is Lens. Um, in this regards, because you have it uh, visualized. Um, the second option is, of course, Lagoon, which is much more than just only GitOps. Um, it's open source as well. You can download it, uh, it and it uh, can even automate the CI process for you. So uh, it can create even uh, a container image for you without knowing how to create container images and will push those changes or the updates to your target environment. Or of course you can use GitLab, even the uh, community edition includes GitOps tooling as well. Since we are already uh, at the end um, of our sessions, um, I would like to thank you again for your patience, for all the questions. Um, feel free to contact me. As mentioned, um, you can contact me via LinkedIn, via uh, GitHub, or if you want to directly via email. So it's uh, j-h-e-n-n-i-g uh, at mirantis.com. Just for the upcoming um, webinars, feel free to join them as well. Um, the next one will be on March 21st <clears throat> at 3 p.m. GMT. Uh, a bit different than this one today. We have uh, feature presenter Toby Goodluck, uh, who will talk about Kubernetes at the point of sale. We have another one in April uh, the 4th um, at 3 p.m. to GMT with Kevin Patrick Hannon and Gia uh, Open so uh, Source. Um, that's scheduling across multiple Kubernetes clusters. Thank you again and have a nice day.